My sister done lost her mind. I heard she done lost her to a fine young thing. Too old for that boy. Too old to be running around here trying to pop your little fingers like one of these little teenage gals. God has given me a second chance, and I'm gonna take it. PBS Hollywood Presents was made possible by the Amundsen Foundation, committed to the creative pursuit of quality in the arts. Michael J. Connell Foundation. Lovelace Family Trust. The Corporation for Public Broadcasting. And by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Mr. Witherspoon, Deacon Slater says that you need to rent a room when you come to Harlem to search for your friend. I believe we can work something out. Harlem is a big place. My sister lives here with me. Dear Miss Barney, I wonder, do you know of any jobs for a hard-working person? I can do almost anything. So many boys have been drafted into the Army. You might find something. I feel like I know you in person. You sound so much like my mama. Again. Shh. I guess I left it on. So these robbers and rapists will think somebody's home. That's the way we did it when I lived in Brooklyn. You ain't living in Brooklyn now. You in my house, and I got to pay the electric here. Well, I know, I know. You've been reminding me ever since I got here. As soon as I get me one more day's work, I'm gonna pay you. Well, till you get it, keep the radio off. I thought that's why you was taking in this new room you got, to help pay the rent. That is why. This don't seem right. You ain't never talked to me. Ain't never said nothing about taking in no room. I didn't have to talk to you. These are hard times, Quilly. Got everybody down at the church just a talking. I talking. don't care what everybody down at the church is just talking about. Ain't nobody down there paying my rent. And it keeps going up. When Mrs. Shivak moved to Florida, I lost three days' work. That left me only Mrs. Langbaum, which wasn't enough. And then you came. I gave what I can. I didn't say you didn't, Quilly, but you know with this war going on that white folks ain't hiring us like they used to. And good apartments are hard to come by. That's what I'm saying. Where is he gonna get the money to pay the rent from? He ain't got no job. Just try and be nice to him when he gets here. All I'm saying is why'd you have to take a man? For all you know, he might be one of these card-playing, corn liquor-drinking, womanizing mill workers. Deacon Slater said that husband is a very fine upstanding husband. young... Husband? Husband is his first name. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Listen, I could tell from his letters that he really is a nice young letters, man. Letters? You been like writing that, but... to him? We wrote a couple of times after we agreed about renting the room for a short while till he finds his girlfriend and they're going back home together. You can't trust no gator tail eating Geechee up here looking for another Geechee from, what's the name of the place they from? Frogmore. Frogmore. Frogmore, South Carolina. Just to remember, his rent is helping us keep this place. Oh, 
Lord, it's hot already. What we eating tonight, Bess? I don't know what you eating. I'm going to eat that dinner I brought back from the church. Don't touch my pig feet. I don't want no pig feet. Good. You can just eat them leftovers. It's your week to cook. I told you they was running out of food, but you and Sister Wallace was so busy showing off them old lodge uniforms looking like the gold dust twins. Oh, you're just jealous. You was just showing off. Ladies of the Golden Sector. I haven't been to a lodge meeting since you moved here a month ago. Yes. If you cook tonight, I'll take two of yours next week. No, you won't. Yes, I will. No, you won't. You will scheme and tonight to get out of it. I know you, Queen Esther, just like you're doing now. Come on, Bess. Shoot, I'm tired. Plus, this girl is killing me. You should be tired. Running all over creation like a chicken with his head cut off trying to get to some funeral. You made us both late. I was trying to wait for Mr. Witherspoon. This train must be late. I wanted to get a good seat so I could see. I'm surprised you didn't sit right up front next to the casket. I tried. It was reserved for the elders. Did you see that ugly dress they put on? They said her husband wanted to put her away in something she liked. Said it was her favorite. It was ugly then, too. Oh, and all that bright red lipstick. You know she was too dark to wear that color. She looked better when she was living. you supposed to. Mm. Quiet as Kip, I think that dress probably killed her. Quilly, be quiet about that woman. You think her husband gonna marry again? The woman's not in the ground good, Quilly. She ain't gonna get no data. Look and see who that is. Look like your rumor. Husband. <laughs> yeah, your husband. Well, throw him the key, Quilly. Lord, mercy. Come up to 2A! You don't know nothing about this man. For all you know, he could be a rapist or something. Well, unless something's wrong with him, you and me ain't got nothing to worry about. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Shoot. Answer the door, Quilly. You answer the door. It's your room. I don't want to have nothing to do with him. She's coming! <clears throat> Mr. Witherspoon? Yes, ma'am. Miss Bonnie? Hello. Oh, oh my. This, this handle done fell apart twice. I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> Oh, this is my sister, Mrs. McGrath. How do you do? Miss uh, Barney spoke about you in the letters. Did she now? And what's the name of that place you're from in South Carolina? Quilly. Uh, you mean Frogmore? Yes, that's just what I mean. Frogmore. Pure Geechee country. Quilly, please. How was your trip? Was your train late? Oh, no, ma'am. Actually, it was on time. I called myself taking the A train to Harlem, like the song saying, uh, Kind of missed my stop, got a little lost. I rode that train so long, I thought I was gonna end up back in Frogmore. <laughs> anyway, when I got back on this side, I stopped by a restaurant where they say Lou Bessie is supposed to be working. Well, that's my friend. Lou Bessie, Lord have mercy. Well, they told me that she quit, and she's now uh, cleaning the house up in a place called Great Neck. You know what that said? Oh, yeah. That's way out on Long Island somewhere. Well, anyway, I think I tried to find her. They gave me her address. Oh, well, now, you can't go just walking around in those white folks' neighborhood because if the police don't get you, a bunch of white men might. That's right. Don't go thinking that just because you're up here in the North, it's any different than it is in the South, because in some ways, it's worse. Worse. <laughs> Would you like to see your room, Mr. Witherspoon? Oh, uh, yes, ma'am. Oh, and you, you can call me husband, like my mama used to. <laughs> I surely will. And you may call me Miss Elizabeth. I prefer Mrs. McGrath. Yes, ma'am. You have a very pretty place. And we aim to keep it that way. This is your room, Mr. Witherspoon. Oh, husband. <laughs> it ain't big, but, well, I think you'll find it cozy. Yes, ma'am. The kitchen is this way. Now, you do have kitchen privileges. You just have to provide your own food. Yes, ma'am. The bathroom is to this side, and I will show you where your soap shelf is. 
and the, the telephone is here. When you can get on it. It's a party line. Um, husband, I do have a few rules. Rent is due first of the month. And there's no smoking, no drinking, no cursing. And of course, no women in the room. Oh, no, ma'am. Well, that's about it. Oh, I, I do have a set of keys for you. Thank you, Miss Elizabeth. Back home, we don't have much use for keys. We don't lock our doors. I forgot. What's the matter? Well, I left my other two suitcases downstairs with a man to watch while I brought these up. Are you crazy? You better go on back down there and get your bags, man. Stupid. 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 How stupid can one man be? I bet he still got chicken duty between his toes with his old country time Negro self. Oh, leave him be, Quilly. You forgot what you looked like when you first come up here. I ain't look like that. He's not there. Oh, and poor husband is just running uh -huh. down the street. Oh, Lord, I sure hope all them cars don't hit him. Serve him right. Why are you so mean to him? What you getting all hot about? There ain't no reason for you to treat him like you do, and he ain't done nothing to deserve that. If I hadn't come, you'd be staying in this place alone with some strange man that you don't even know. People taking rumors all over Harlem to help with the rent. Name one Christian woman you know living alone with some man that ain't her husband. Annie Mae Oxford. I said Christian. Oh, Quilly. Why don't you hush up all this foolishness? Husband? Husband? <laughs> When you ring the bell, come stand out on the sidewalk so I can see you. You already have the key. You can come up now. <laughs> Who that boy is dumber than dirt? Shut up! Just shut up! Oh. All I'm saying is, why couldn't you find a woman rumor? I would rather have him than some floozy woman I don't know. Now he's here, Quilly, and he's staying. He's gone. I couldn't find him. <laughs> Did you have anything important in your bags? Uh, yes, ma'am. I had Lou Bess's present. When I had some canned food, I had peaches, tomatoes, succotash. Yeah, at least somebody gonna eat good tonight. And a jar of corn liquor for Deacon Slater. Husband, you did not bring preacher liquor. <laughs> <laughs> Lord have mercy. Let me go on and get out of this girdle. Well, don't worry, husband. You'll find Lou Bessie. Oh, yes, ma'am. That's all I can think about. What did you write to her? Does she know you're coming? Uh, well, I wrote to her, but she ain't write me back. Well, when was the last time you heard from Miss Lou Bessie? It's been a while. One month? Maybe like eight. She sent me a sympathy card when my mama died. That's the last I heard from her. She wanted me to come up here with her, but Mama's so sick, and I was only child and all, so. When she did die, I took care of all the business. Quit my job at the mill and set off to find Lou Bessie. The mill? I thought Deacon Slater said you farmed. <clears throat> well, yes, ma'am, but a kind of piecemeal. I mean, sometimes I pick a little tobacco or cotton, but. Most of the time, I was at my regular job at the mill. Till I got my foot hurt in one of the machines. That's, that's why I'm not in the army. Got classified 4F. Oh. Well, are you hungry? Did you have something to eat? Oh, uh, um, no, ma'am. Actually, I better head back down to the restaurant. See this lady have a number I can reach you best yet. Yes. I'll, I'll get some dinner while I'm there, maybe. Uh, husband, would you mind getting me something while you're out there? Yes, ma'am. Um, go down to Singleton's. That's that restaurant on Lenox Avenue, that big, big street down to the right. Uh, get me a chicken dinner with some collard greens and fatbacks, some black-eyed peas and rice, macaroni and cheese, yams, and a side order of okra and, and cornbread. And ask for Miss Lucy. Tell her it's for Mrs. Quilly. She know how to fix my plate. Yes, ma'am. And, and check the chicken. You know, with all this rationing going on, some folks is substituting with horse meat. Let the man go, Quilly. Mm-hmm. And, and get me a lemonade. <laughs> and a peach cobbler. Two, two, two peach cobblers. You too much, Quilly. You didn't offer the man a penny to pay for your food. I'm going to pay the man. What you getting all hot about? I know you, Queen Esther. You take, 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 then cry, po' mouth. 
I said I was gonna pay the man. They got plenty of people out there waiting to take advantage of somebody like him without it being the folks he lives with. But he don't live with me, so I guess it's you he got to be worried about. I believe you sweet on that boy. You talking out your head. <laughs> I believe he done touched one of your buttons. <laughs> Just shut up. Just shut up. Goodness, who in the world could this be? Probably old country time and left his keys and his money, too. Who is it? I was told I could find husband Witherspoon here. Who's looking for him? My name is Charmaine. Just a minute, I'll throw down the key. You don't know nothing about that woman. It ain't no rapist. That's Lou Bessie. I didn't hear her say nothing about no Lou Bessie. She said Charmaine. That's Lou Bessie. You mark my words. Is he here? And you are? Oh, I'm Charmaine. I know her husband told you my name was Lou Bessie Preston, but I changed it to Charmaine. Well, I know he must have told you about me. We come from the same hometown, and now he's come over here looking for me. I'm planning to get husband to change his name, too. You can't be running around Harlem with names like Lou Bessie and husband. Amen to that. I'm Elizabeth Barney, and this is my sister, Quilly McGrath. Please make your acquaintance. Ooh, this is a nice place. So many plants and pictures. A husband went to where you used to work to see if he could get a telephone number for where you're working now. He should be back in, in a little while if, if you'd like to sit down. Uh, but, uh, Quilly, why don't you get Miss Lou Bessie some iced tea from Charmaine. the ice... Charmaine. Iced tea from the ice box. We don't have no more iced tea. Then get her some water. Look, I can't stay long. Tonight is kitchen mechanics night at the Savoy Ballroom. And, uh, I'm gonna take Andre there so I can introduce him to some of my friends. Andre? Husband. I know he can't wait to see me. He used to follow me all over town down home, ask me to marry him and all. I wasn't about to stand no frog more and him all tied to his mama like he was. Well, he certainly has his heart set on getting together with you and... Yeah, well, maybe now that we both up here and his mama ain't, maybe things can be different. Maybe. Oh, I just love Harlem. I ain't never seen so many colored people in one place in all my life. Parties, dances, shows, parades, and all them fine-looking soldiers everywhere. Oh. <laughs> Here's your iced tea, Miss Charmaine. Thank you. Mm. Maybe we can get us a place on Sugar Hill or Stravers Row. And if husband goes into the army, I can... we can get an allotment. And with the money I know his mama gave him. Me and my friend and husband, we could probably open up a combination of beauty salon and barber shop. There's a war going on, don't you know? Husband could get killed. Oh, he don't have to worry. That's what makes it so good. They ain't about to actually let no colored soldiers fight. They just put them in them pretty uniforms and pay them to march and strut. You ever seen any of them parades on 7th Avenue? Would you like some more iced tea? Oh, no, I gotta run. I'm meeting some friends and we gonna all go out together. Now, tell Andre I want him to meet me over at the Savoy. Now, he hasn't changed his name yet. Nah, he will. He'll do anything I tell him to do. <laughs> I'ma have to teach Andre how to lindy hop. And if he gets good enough, we might become partners and enter the swing contest. <laughs> well, he sure is gonna be disappointed you couldn't wait for him. No, oh, he won't be disappointed when he sees me. Now, tell him to come straight to the Savoy Ballroom. Tell him he can't miss it if he goes straight up. I know to... where the Savoy is. Ooh, -wee. who is this handsome cat? Is this you with your husband when you was young? What? Uh, Him right here. No, that that's me and <clears throat> my husband. Oh, you've been married. Yes. Who is he at? I don't know. We're not together anymore. Why not? He got frisky like a dog, so I put him out, if it's any business of yours. Didn't you say your friends are waiting? You think you'll ever get married again? Not if I have to marry another man. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> well, I'm gonna have to be going. And I don't forget to tell Andre. And oh, don't tell him I'm Charmaine now. I want it to be a surprise. 
<laughs> Bye. Mm, so that's Miss Lou Bessie. She sure is mighty sure of herself. Just like you. What is that supposed to mean? You know what it means. When did you put that picture out? What? That picture. When did you put it out? I don't know. When? Yesterday. Get it out of here, Quilly. Before I throw it and you out. Yes, I just wanted my picture up here with the rest of the family. The family? It's because of you I don't have a family. You ain't been living back here a month good and already. You starting your mess, I'm not gonna have it, Quilly. After all I've done for you and all you've done to me, you gonna rub it in my face again? You wanna continue living in this house? You better take yourself in that thing and get out of my sight as fast as you can. I mean now. Best. Now! Welcome, welcome, welcome to the world-famous Savoy Ballroom where everybody who's anybody comes to see and be seen. Dancing the latest, the greatest, the hippest, and the swiftest steps known to mankind. Here, we carry on and swing till dawn. So old folks, young folks, all fall in line and have ourselves a real good time. Take it away, Cal. <laughs> Let me show you some steps. You know I can't be partying while I'm working. But you said you could when you got off the stage. Look, baby, I got to check the cash register receipts. You know, you can't trust nobody. Yeah, sure. Me and you, Charmaine, on the floor when I get back? Lou, where you been? Christian, Let me see. You look wonderful, girl. You can ask so much. Show me. Girl, you look like you done seen a ghost. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> and his country. Oh, Jesus. You know that cat, Charmaine? Mm -hmm. Cause he's sure looking like he know you. I know. <laughs> Lou Bessie! Look at you, girl. <laughs> oh, come on, Lou. I did. He said I wasn't going to be able to find you in Harlem. But I knew I would. I knew I was going to find you. Look at you, Lou Bessie. Let me Look at you. Hey. Lou Bessie. Lou Bessie. Lou Bessie. My name is Charmaine. Since Mama died, all I could do was think about you all the time. Say, B. Now, ain't that your woman? I packed up everything. I set off to find you. And here you are. She when I say so. Well, who's that corn pone cheese with? Just another Geechee up here sniffing after Charmaine. Can't you work? Do I look worried? Well, you ought to be. Because she is a fox. <laughs> oh, they don't call me gut bucket for nothing. <laughs> Lou Bess. Come here, baby. OK. Ain't that Bucket Jasper from down home? Look here, this is Lula Mae. She's gonna keep you company till I get back. And then I'm gonna take you to all the fly spots, Smalls and Jimmy's. Look, you just stay tight. And I'll be back real soon, all right? Come on, honey, let's dance. Come on, just stay with me. What are you doing, sitting alone in the dark at this hour of the night? Couldn't sleep, so I thought I'd sit up a while and watch the comings and goings over there at Harlem Hospital. Ain't even a weekend yet, and already those doctors and nurses got a full house. Mm. Lord have mercy. What some colored folks do to one another. What 
What you doing up? No, oh, I just got it to get me some water. That's a tale. You just came in here to see why I was up so you could fuss. Did he come back yet? No. It's 2.30 in the morning. He can't be coming in here all hours of the night. Some folks got to get up and work in the morning. You don't. Didn't do a day all last week. Well, I got me one this morning. Mrs. Spearman said she almost didn't get through on that party line we got. Well, tell her to give you some more days, and we'll get ourselves a private line. Hello, uh, Miss Elizabeth, Miss McGrath. How are you? I'm fine. And it is morning. Miss Elizabeth. Good morning, husband. It is very late. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, I ain't mean to wake nobody. You didn't wake me. Oh, Miss Elizabeth, she been the one sitting keeping guard at the window all night. <laughs> oh, I, well, I just couldn't sleep. <laughs> that happens sometimes. And, and when it does, I just come out and, and I sit and I watch the, the comings and goings on over there at Harlem Hospital. It, it's like a moving picture show, you know? Yes, ma'am. That's the way I feel. And Lou Bessie took me all these places after we left the Savoy. See, there was uh, uh, Jimmy's Chicken Shack, uh, Smalls, and uh, some, some big old ballroom. The Renaissance? Yes, ma'am, that's, that's it. There were all kind of people there, boy. I tell you, it's just like you say, it was like being at the movies. She introduced me to all types of folks with funny names I ain't never heard before. Look who's talking. What kind of names? Well, there was uh, West Indian Archie, um, uh, King Padmore, Dutch somebody. Where does Lou Bessie meet these kind of people? These are gangsters, husband. Gangster? Well, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't understand a lot. I do know Lou Bessie seemed like she changed awful lot. Almost seemed like she's somebody else. Speaking of change, how you like your new name? My new name? Well, Miss Charmaine said she was going to change your name to Andre, but I guess she forgot to tell you. Oh, Miss McGrath, my name's husband. Ain't nobody changing nothing. Iceman be here soon. Some of us got to work in the morning. Good night. I didn't mean to talk bad to Miss McGrath, Miss Elizabeth. Oh, I know that husband. He said listening to her is like listening to Lou Bessie all over again. She ain't like nothing about me neither. She said, Where'd you get that suit and that shirt? And those shoes? Those are the ugliest shoes I've ever seen. And your hair? I'm gonna have to fix you up, Andre. <laughs> What's wrong with your hair? She said need changing. Now, I don't know. She can take care of all she wants, but I ain't changing my name. Well, if you don't want to, you shouldn't. And I'm going to keep on calling her Lou Bessie, too. Well, now, if somebody wants to change their own name, I think we should respect that. Well, no, I don't know about that, Miss Elizabeth. I mean, I don't know this woman call herself Charmaine. That ain't the Lou Bessie I come up here to find. She might not be the same woman that you knew in South Carolina. People do change, husband. Especially when they come up here to Harlem. See, I, I, don't, I don't understand, Miss Elizabeth. I... <sighs> Why? There's something you have to find out. Oh, it is late. I guess I better be turning in. Miss Elizabeth, I'm kind of wondering what you and um, Miss McGrath was doing up so late. Well, uh, Quilly wanted some water, and I couldn't sleep. You weren't worried about nothing? No, husband. I, I'm not worried about anything. Well, I was asking you because my mama told me that there's only two reasons that people stay up at night. That's a troubled mind or talking stomach. Since you say you ain't worried about nothing, I figure it's because you're hungry. The stomach must be talking to you. <laughs> no, husband. I ate my dinner last night. <laughs> well, that may be, but this is the morning. And my mama was never wrong. Now, I'm about to go to a place called Wimpy's and get myself some breakfast with this ticket I won. It's for two. I figure maybe you uh, want to come join me. It's free. <laughs> Thanks.
thank you, husband, but it, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. Well, then we lucky then, because the ticket's good until 6 o'clock in the morning. And I ain't about to let it go to waste. It's the first thing I ever won. I, I'd be very happy if you would join me. Husband, thank you, but it's, it's too late. Where's Lou Bessie? I didn't want to say it, but uh, I don't know where she's at. After we left the Savoy, we went to some bar, ran into a woman she knows, had a couple soldiers with her. They all went off somewhere. I see. You know, it's funny. Ever since my mama died, I, I've, I've been eating alone. Well, I understand about eating alone. Then you need to come with me. You ain't gonna get no sleep with your stomach talking to you. <laughs> Husband, I haven't been outside of this house after 11 o'clock in years, and, and that was for the watch hour service at the church to bring in the new year. I, I, I don't know what it looks like out there this time of night. Well, I can tell you this much. It's pretty. I mean, sure, y'all got the street lights on here and stuff, but where I'm from, the stars are still out. And in a couple of minutes, the sun gonna peak up just enough to tell the day to come on in. Oh. Oh, my goodness. Um, if you could wait a minute. <laughs> I'll get a sweater. Oh, yes, ma'am. I can wait. Husband. Now, we don't want to wake up Miss Quilly because she would have a fit. And we don't want that. I don't know, ma'am. We don't want that. <laughs> oh, now, husband, I know that you did not catch no June bug and tie straight around his leg. You didn't. Yes, we did. And we caught him, and then we let him fly away. You don't believe me, do you? What? That old, yes, old I, woman I with that you young, know, young you cat? You, you know what that is, don't you? <laughs> That's an old settler. Well, how you know that ain't her nephew? Could be her ain't cousin no nephew or make an auntie laugh and carry on like that. Look at her. She got that young man hypnotized. <laughs> you know, in Frogmore, I'll get up in the mornings and pray, and uh, I can see heaven on a lot of day. But out here, you look out a window, all you see is a wall of somebody looking right back at you. I just don't think the people are supposed to meant to live on top of one another like that. I know exactly what you mean. What I miss most, when we used to go to church, especially at night, mm -hmm. me and Quilly walking down the road on the way to the First Baptist of Halifax, carrying a lantern so we could be on the lookout for snakes. <laughs> but long before you get to the church, you could hear the people. The voices. The choir. Hands clapping, feet stomping, folks rocking from side to side. Didn't have no piano. All we had was our voices, our hands, a tambourine, and our love for the Lord. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. Oh, may I get you folks anything else? Some coffee? Uh... Oh, no. No. No, ma'am. What time is it? It's 8 a.m., and I don't mean to rush you folk, but I got to start cleaning up for the morning shift. Oh, I don't know where the time went. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> They make good breakfast, don't they? Oh, they do. And I ate too much. <laughs> oh, goodness. I sure hope Quilly's not up. I don't feel like he in her mouth. Shouldn't have to. I mean, we both grown folk. My mama's gone, and your mama's gone, so shouldn't nobody tell us what we can and can't do. Get off the doggone telephone! Where have you been? 
Good morning, Quilly. Miss McGrath? I've been worried sick about you. I didn't go to work worrying about you. Where have you been? Let's talk about this in your room, Quilly. No, if anybody's gonna leave the room, it's gonna be him and not me. We'd like a little privacy, if you don't mind. Yes, ma'am. You don't have to leave the apartment, husband. You live here, too. I know you must be tired. Why don't you just go in your room and lie down? All right, I will. Cow still on the telephone. I couldn't even get through to Miss Ann to tell her I wasn't coming to work today. If I had gotten through, I was going to call the police about you. Don't do that again, Quilly. I'm a grown woman. I'm not a child. Well, so don't why don't talk you to me act like, like one? I was worried about you. I didn't know if you were in the hospital or laying up somewhere dead. I leave you alone, sitting in the dog by the window, and I wake up and you're gone, he's gone. I didn't know what to think. I went out. And I don't have to ask your permission to go out. At 2.30 in the morning and it's 8.30 now? I went out. We went out and we ate. Ate what? Pig feet and frog more? <laughs> After all these years, all of a sudden, you worried about me. Something wrong with you, Bess. That Geechee done worked his mojo on you. I'm going to work now. You need to come on in here and clean up after yourself. What you need to be doing. Miss Elizabeth? I hope I ain't caused too much trouble between you and Miss McGrath. Oh, no, husband. You didn't cause no trouble. It was there already. Um, I hope you don't mind me saying, but, uh, I had a nice time with you last night. Well, thank you. I enjoyed being with you, too. Seeing as how it's daylight, I guess I can't really say goodnight. I ain't never been up all night to where you had to say goodnight in the day, so I guess we'll just say sleep well. Or like my mama used to say, sweet dream. All right. Sweet dream. She used to kiss me when she said that. I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna go wash up. Without a key. Some fool came out and I walked in. Now, where's Andre? I believe you mean husband. Yeah, husband. That's exactly who I mean. Now, where is he? Husband! Husband, Lubess is here looking for you. Yes, ma'am. I'll be right out, Miss Elizabeth. Keep me right out. I heard. And I told you my name is Charmaine. I'm gonna try real hard to remember that. Hey, Lou Bessie. Oh, don't give me that hey, Lou Bessie crap. You won that drawing for that breakfast because I took you to the Renaissance ballroom. You got some damn nerve taking another woman out to eat a breakfast I won for you. Oh, wait a minute, Lou Bessie. I bought that ticket for you. I paid for everything last night for you and your friends. I don't give a damn what you paid for. I took you there. If it hadn't been for me, you wouldn't have even bought the damn ticket. Then I got to hear from my friends about you coming into Wimpy's with some other woman, some old settler. Look, I'm trying to get things set up for us, and you running around all hours of the night with her. As a matter of fact, they called her an old, old settler, laughing their asses off. Now, if you're going to use that kind of language, you're going to have to get out of here. I'll talk any way I want. Not in my house, you won't. Let's go to your room, husband. I told husband when he came to rent, no smoking, no drinking, no cursing, and no women in the room. What? You mean you're paying rent for a room and you can't even have your own company in there? That's right. No women in the room. I wasn't talking to you. I'm talking to you. No women in the room. Well, then I guess that includes you, too, huh? Hey, Lou Bessie. Look, I'm getting the hell out of here. Good, and take your foul mouth with you. Well, I, I don't want to hear nothing from you, Quilly. All I was going to say is I'm getting ready to go to work now. And if that white woman calls, tell her that I already left. I'll tell her the subway broke down or something. She probably can't get through the old motor mouth on the phone. Get off the telephone! Miss Elizabeth, I'm sorry. Listen, I ain't never heard her cursing and yelling like that. She never acted like that before. L listen, 
She got to go to Great Neck. I'm going to take her down to the train station and help her calm down a little bit. I'll be back. Husband. Yes, ma'am? Where does Lubessie sleep? Well she, well, she lives in Great Neck. No, I mean when she's here in Harlem, not when she's asleep in out in Long Island. She has to sleep somewhere. Well, yes, ma'am, but I, I, I don't really know. Well, isn't that something you ought to know? I, I ain't never thought about it like that. You, you mind if I ask you a question, Miss Elizabeth? No, husband, what is it? What's an old settler? Yeah. I think Quilly is better suited to answer that. An old settler is what folks up this way calls a woman pushing 40 ain't been married and ain't got no prospects. An old, old settler. I, I understand, Mr. McGrath. I can kind of, kind of figure it out from there. Andre, you coming? I'm gonna be late. That was mean, Bess. That was mean what you asked that boy about where that woman sleeps. What you put on me to tell him. Mean? You calling me mean? All I ever done is love you, Queen Esther. But even when we were little girls in the country, you always tried to beat everything we did. You still living Jump in the past. Times table, solos in the choir. Always you come take. Take, I didn't take nothing take, from you. And I would forgive. I wanted to be forgive. like you. You got it I wrong. I came up here to work. I sent money home for her. Mama could buy you shoes and clothes for school. And when she died and left you alone, I brought you up here to live with me. I took care of you till you started working a job I got for you. You was the oldest. I was always walking in your footprints, always wearing your hand-me-downs, always your things. And it's still like that. This is your house we living in. These are your things. But Herman wasn't yours. You tore my heart out and shamed me before the world, and I still loved you. I put my pride aside and come looking for you to make peace, because you was my sister. And even now, when I have a little bit of happiness, you try to take it away. Take what? You put that picture out here after I told you. Is I that never what this is about, to a picture? Again. You steal everything. You stole him from I'm me. I'm going to steal what wasn't yours. You knew I loved Herman. Herman didn't love you, Bess. He did till you come along with your fast He self. didn't love you. Everything was fine till you come bouncing up here like you Did he all... tell you he loved you even oh, He would have if you had let us be. We was close. He cared for me deeply. He was tell the truth, America. Bess. Tell the truth. He told you he didn't. You was my sister. It didn't matter whether he loved me or not. You was my sister. You knew I loved him, which means you should have kept your hands off. If you had come along, I'd have made him love me. It don't matter how mad you get at me, Bess. You ain't gonna keep that boy from chasing after that Lou Bessie. If she wants him, she's gonna get him. And that's just how it is. I'm going to work now. Miss Elizabeth? Oh. Husband. I'm sorry Lou Bessie called you that name. That's all right, husband. You can say old settler. Don't matter to me. Well, it matters to me. Well, I'm going to be moving. Why? Did I say anything about you moving? Well, I figured you wouldn't want Luke Bessie around, so... I think my little Luke Bessie. I'm about to fix myself something to eat. You hungry? It's been a long time since breakfast. All we have are leftovers. That's all we ever have when Miss Quilly's turn to cook. <laughs> well, that's all right. Sometimes leftovers are better. You give the flavor a longer chance to settle in. Let me help you. Thank you. 
You could sit down and keep me company. Miss Elizabeth, uh, I lied to you. Lou Bessie has a three-year-old daughter. Her mama takes care of her down in Frogmore. She had a baby with a man by the name of Bucket. When they found out she was pregnant, he took off. She sends money down for the baby all the time. After a while, uh, I took up with Lou Bessie. This ma'am always had a had an eye for her, even when she was with Bucket. I see. But last night I finally got a chance to talk to her. I told her I was gonna. I'm gonna get my stuff and move up here with her. That's when she told me that she's living with Bucky. So I asked her, where you sleep, on the floor? She said, no, I sleep in the bed with Bucket, but nothing's happening. I said, you mean to tell me you sleep in the same bed with a man you done had a baby by and nothing's happening? What'd she say? She said I was gonna have to trust her. There's a whole lot of trusting. Funny thing is, I kind of didn't care. Well, I mean, other than the fact that I, I didn't want her to think I was a fool, and then I really didn't care. Why not? <sighs> Miss Elizabeth, I thought about that all the way back from Great Neck. And, and it's because, now, I don't want you to take no offense to this, Miss Elizabeth. I know I'm kind of young and all, but I know what makes me feel good. And I suspect that you know what makes you feel good. Now, I ain't never had no night like last night, laughing and, and talking enough all night. You ever had a night like that, Miss Elizabeth? No. Me neither. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Husband. Listen, Miss Elizabeth, please. Don't don't stop me now, because I finally got the nerve up, and if I do stop, I may not be able to get it again. All I want is to keep that feeling that I had. So I'm, I'm asking you to let me spend more time with you like I did last night. Oh, husband. Oh, don't play with me. I'm too old for that. I ain't playing. And you know what? You ain't too old. You're just a little older. What you want with me? I want the way you make me feel. Like the way I felt at the restaurant, like the way you made me feel when I read your letters. What about Lou Bessie? You told me you ain't want to talk about Lou Bessie. Neither do I. I want to, and because I believe you want me to. Don't you want me to? Miss Elizabeth, can I take you to the movies? Yes. 
Geneva, give me three of these flowers for they all gone. Quilly, you know they cost a nickel apiece. No, yeah, I know. Tell Sister Bra next time I'm gonna pay it this afternoon. Girl, you always begging. What <laughs> <laughs> happened to you, Rosalie? We thought you fell in. Oh! <laughs> Hi, Geneva, Rosalie. Quilly, I didn't know you was having a meeting here today. Oh, well, we just about finished, Bess. That's all right. Don't mind me. I just came home to change my clothes. You oh. going out again? Mm-hmm. Lord have mercy, my sister done lost her mind. I heard she done lost her to a fine young thing. Don't he live here too? Geneva. I wish it was me. See y'all at the church later. <laughs> Bye, Geneva. Rosalie. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> oh, my Lord. I ain't heard that song in years. Remember how we used to sing it when we was little girls in the church? Woo. <laughs> I get stuck singing that woo part. That ain't no singing. This is the first time you sang it. You was only three. Yeah, and I've been wooing ever since. <laughs> That's because you were so cute. Mm. Oh, I bet to this day you still don't know the words. Well, why should I? I ain't never get to sing the song. Those were happy times. And I'm so happy now. Come on, sing with me, Quilly. No. Oh, Quilly, please. No. Quilly, please. Double, no. please. Triple, please. Oh, please. Oh, all right, all right. Hush and sing. Didn't it rain, children? Rain all night long. Didn't it? Woo. Didn't it? Woo. Didn't it? Woo. Oh, my Lord. Didn't it rain? Didn't it rain? All right, children. all right. That's enough woos. What are we going to do? Give a recital? Besides, I want to catch me a nap for this Mother's Day program this afternoon. Thought you were serving Miss Radusky's party. Well, you thought wrong. I'm coming straight home after that program. I'm tired of kitchens. Quilly, you can't do that. Watch me. She's depending on you. Well, I don't feel like serving no white folks today. Why? What happened? You remember how happy Sister Wallace at the church was that she was going down to Georgia with her four kids to visit her mama for Mother's Day? Yeah. Well, Reverend Osborne says she called, crying her heart out today because the crackers had overbooked the train and started taking seats from the colored section. Just kept letting the white folks on and kicking the colored folks off. Now Sister Wiles and her kids are stuck in Washington, D.C. with a box lunch. They ain't gonna make it to Georgia in time. I can't stand how white folks can be so mean. But, Quilly, you can't blame Miss Radusky for that. Why can't I? We can't blame all white people for what some of them do. Yes, we can. We don't want them blaming all Negroes for what some of us do. Well, they do, don't they? Oh, God almighty, a phone call got through. Motor mouth must have died. Hello? Yes, it's for you. Hello? Oh, hi. I I'm changing my clothes. No, I didn't change my mind. <laughs> How late you gonna be? Well, what kind of surprise? Now, that ain't fair. Tell me now. <laughs> okay, but I still say that ain't fair. <laughs> I, I can't. <laughs> yes, I do, but I can't now. <laughs> All right, I'll see you then. Bye. That was husband. No kidding. <laughs> I gotta change my clothes. Here, I got you some flowers for Mother's Day. Thank you, Quilly. Mm. I forgot all about getting carnations for Mother's Day. I can't imagine why. I'm not going to the program because husband's taking me out to eat. Bess, what's wrong with you? There ain't nothing wrong with me. We're just going out to eat. That boy needs to go to church, confused as he is, and that's the God's honest truth. And they serving dinner at the church. Y'all can eat right there after. No, we can't because he's taking me someplace special. Where? I don't know. It's a surprise. Yeah, old husband just full of surprises. He gonna surprise you good one day. You mark my word. Oh, I gotta get dressed. We both know what this is all about, Bess. You don't cook for your rumor. That boy's been eating here every night this week. Well, I've been buying extra, so... I've been cooking extra. Yeah, but has he been giving you extra? Maybe he has. That's a common thing to say, Quilly. Too old for that boy. Too old to be running around here trying to pop your little fingers and run in the street like one of these little teenage gals. You should have heard yourself on the telephone. Hee-hee-hee. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> that ain't fair. 
You forget about that Lou Bessie? Hmm? What about that Miss Charmaine? What about her? Oh, just going out to eat, huh? I must seem straight. Yeah, they straight, all right. But you need a girdle on. Then again, forget it. Can't nothing else fit in that dress. Bess! Bess, you can't make a it. Hello, everybody. Lord have mercy, God. Jesus, help us, please. Bess, how you like my surprise? Bess? Well, Bess said it's all right to call her Bess. Then I guess it's all right. How do I look? Confused. You could kill a roach in the corner with the tip of them shoes. Ooh! What's the matter? I won't go out with you looking like that, husband. Well, now, wait a minute. What's wrong? You look like a clown. Everywhere I went with Lou Bessie, all the hip cats was wearing you this. You don't know nothing about no hip cat. Quilly, would you please be quiet? Oh, husband, that suit is bad enough, but look at what you did to your hair. Lou Bessie said that. I don't want to hear no more about Lou Bessie. Ain't no need in you standing there looking like Uncle Ben before he started cooking rice. What'd I do? If you don't know, then you need to take your old country time butt back down to the woods for that Lou Bessie heifer get you killed or put in jail. Why ain't you in the army with the rest of the boys your age? Because. Because why? Because ain't no use of me running off getting myself killed for white folks when they kill me right here just for wearing the uniform. Hmm, looking like that, I can't blame them. And what about that Lou Bessie? What about Lou Bessie? Ain't nobody studying Lou Bessie. Oh, no? Well, who got you to conk your hair? Who dressed you up like a clown? Bess ain't going nowhere with you looking like a runaway from a minstrel show. Well, you ask me, and I'm going to tell you. Your mama's gone. You come up here chasing that lazy good-for-nothing, some kind of piece of a woman, and things didn't go right. So you latch on to my sister, the old settler. That's right, old enough to be your mama. And the two of you fool yourself into thinking that is love. Mm. I do love her. Now, I don't know what's got you so set against me, but you ain't got no cause to say that. I got cause because that's my sister. I seen a heart torn out of her body 30 years ago. Maybe I could have done something about it, maybe not. But I ain't gonna stand here and see it done again. I don't know about all that. But I ain't mean best no harm. I don't think you know what you mean. But I'm gonna tell you this. It may not show, but I love my sister. She's done a lot for me, and she's all I got in this world. And if you hurt her, I'll run over you like a truck running over a rooster. And that's the God's honest truth. Come on, Quilly. We don't want to be late for this program at the church. All right, don't forget our carnations. I'm getting dressed. Quilly brought these carnations for Mother's Day. They didn't have three white ones, so you take that one. Thank you. Don't thank me. Thank Quilly. Oh, husband. Look at what you've done to yourself. Look at your hair. I did it for you, Bess. I ain't look nothing like all the fellas that Lou Bessie was Lou thinking. Bessie? I ain't no Lou Bessie. You can't get that through your head. Did I say you look bad? No, ma'am. Did I tell you to go and, 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 and do your hair like that? No, ma'am. Would you stop? No, ma'am and me. You, I'm supposed to be your woman, not your mama. Why didn't you ask me instead of Lou Bessie before you go and, and mess yourself up like that? Lou Bessie said that. Oh, this is a mistake. And when you get my age, you can't be making too many mistakes. Well, if you made a mistake, then, uh... I guess me spending all this money's a mistake, too. Don't be blaming buying them clothes on me. I ain't talking about no clothes. I told you I had a surprise for you. Husband. Let me put it on for you. Cost me $97. Bought it at uh, Bush's Jewelry over there on 125th Street. Oh, it's beautiful. You like it? I love it. I love it. Quilly! Quilly! Oh, Quilly, look! Look, Quilly, look! I 
I guess this means you ain't going to the Mother's Day luncheon, huh? Oh, Quilly, come on, Quilly, be happy for me, please. Why should I? You weren't happy for me. You didn't even speak to me for years. But, Quilly, that was different, and you know it. Quilly, please. I'm happy for you, Bess. Got to go to church. What calls you and Miss McGrath not to be speaking for so long? Oh, husband, not now. You gave me this beautiful ring, and I'm so happy. I don't want to think about nothing sad. I ain't never gonna do nothing to make you sad. You mean it? Yes, I do. I'll show you, Bess. No more Lou Bessie. Lou Bessie's finished. So are these clothes. Mother's Day. Ain't nobody's mama. You sure about that? You used to go to bed on time so you could get up and go to church in the mornings. If I wanted to hear preaching, I would be going to church with you. You ain't been since that boy moved in here. He ain't there. Where is he? He's fully grown, Quilly. Like everybody else in this house. Oh, couldn't I got the worst headache? Oh. <laughs> I had champagne last night. <laughs> champagne? Uh -huh. <laughs> you don't drink, Bess. Mm. Well, we celebrated him giving me the ring. Yeah. How's he gonna pay for it? A dollar down and a dollar when they catch him? Still ain't got no job. He paid for it, all right. You stop going to church. You start wearing tight-fitting clothes, staying out all hours of the night, Hanging out in beer gardens, drinking champagne. Next thing I know, all kind of filth gonna be coming out of your mouth like Lou Bessie. That's what you're trying to do, is be a Lou Bessie for him. What is it? If I was a man with a woman half his age, you wouldn't be making such a fuss. You ain't a man, and neither is he. It's a mama's boy looking for a new mama. You fit the bill. That cricket brain Lou Bessie ain't what the chickens left. Sad as it might seem, she is the woman in his life. You just the new mama. Who got the ring? Who, Bessie or me? Yeah, you got the ring. But what you gonna do when that boy's nature start to rise two and three times a night? That's a young, strong, healthy country boy. What you gonna do? You ain't used it in so long if you ever used it at all. You don't even know if it works. Now you gotta be talking all up under people's clothes like that. Because it's life, Bess. You too old to have any babies? You think he don't know that? Well, what you think gonna happen when he want a son? We done talked about that already, I told you. Yeah, we're talking about is a lot different than facing it. And he got a yearning for you, and you too tired. That's enough, Quilly. When he wants to continue his name, and you ain't got the means to provide for that, that's when that Lou Bess is gonna be right back there. Right up in there, her or somebody just like her. It's not just that I'm older than he is. There's more to it than that. You jealous. Yeah, you jealous and you want him for yourself. But this is one you ain't gonna get because we leaving. We taking the train to Maryland. We getting married and then we heading down to Frogmore. You only have two more weeks to be bothered with me and husband. Then this place is yours. And you can take that picture you and Herman and put it any way you want. You leaving, Bess? You gonna leave me here all alone by myself? You left me alone. You never once said you were sorry. Maybe you'll feel better when you know that I didn't kick Herman out like I said. Herman left me. Oh, things was real good when we first got together. 
He seemed to love me so much, he just couldn't get enough of me. Took me everywhere, dancing. Then things started to change. I remember it was on a day that I was on a retreat with the ladies from the Golden Scepter, and it had started out a really beautiful day, and then all of a sudden, it turned dark, and the clouds came, and the rain was just pouring down, and the bus driver said, we better go back, or the roads got washed away, so I went home early. Came up them stairs, and I heard music and laughter, and I thought it was the radio. He was always leaving the radio on. I heard his voice in a woman. Just a laughing. I went in that room and there he was with that girl from across the hall. She wasn't but 23 years old. He used to call me Auntie. I stayed with Sister Thompson that night. And when I came back, Herman was gone. I ain't seen him since. Bess, I might not have said it, but I am sorry for all the pain I caused you. I am truly Truly sorry. I'm sorry, too. But God has given me a second chance, and I won't take it. Man, do you know what time it is? What you want, man? Mr. Uh, Mr. Jasper Bucky, I want to know if uh, it was all right if I could speak with Lou with, with Charmaine, if you don't if you don't mind. What if she don't want to speak with you, Geechee? You ever thought of that? Especially since you've been following us around all night long. Who is it, honey? Charmaine. Uh, I just want to talk to you. It's your lover, man, Charmaine. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I just, this just take a minute. Oh, take a minute, take an hour. Hell, just take a witch so I can get some sleep. Oh, it's okay, baby. <laughs> I can take care of them. You better. What the hell do you want, Andre? What are you doing here? I'm busy. I just want to talk to you for a minute. My name ain't Andre. OK, husband. A minute is what you got. I just want to tell you that seeing as how things ain't really working out between us, I'm going to be with Bess. I got her a ring. You what? We going to get married and go live back in Frogmore. You going to marry? Yeah. But Charmaine, I'm sorry. you sorry for what? You're leaving me for Grandma? Oh, man, I got so many fish to fry, I don't even know where to begin. I didn't mean to hurt you, Charmaine. I just figured that it'd be better for both of us this way. I know it's better for me. So what old country time want? Honey, how long we got to stay in this place? What you talking about? You ain't here but two nights out the week. But it's a room, baby. It ain't hardly big enough for us both. That's right, Lou Bessie. But it's my room. It's big enough for me. I told you that. 
I told you that when you come up here following me. I told you I'd let you stay until you got on your feet. And didn't even ask you to pay for nothing. So what? Now you want to come up here and take it over? Talking about it ain't big enough for you? No, baby, but we're a family. I mean, if you could just see little Ruth Anna, you... We ain't no family. Just like your name ain't Charmaine. You had a child. I'm just trying to help you out. Now, this here, this is my place. And I can barely afford it on what I make. But it's mine. And it suits me just fine. You get it? <laughs> yeah, baby, I got it. Did you get the tickets? Oh, yeah, honey. The suitcases are packed and the boxes are almost ready. Just a minute, sweetheart. Somebody's at the door. Who is it? Charmaine. Miss Lupin said, what is she doing here? Just a minute. I ain't got all day. Well, what time are you coming home? All right, bye. It sure took you a long time between just a minute and answering the door. How do you always manage to get into a building without ringing a bell? I just stand there till someone comes out or in, especially if it's a man. He sees a pretty young thing like me, and he holds the door open for her. <laughs> No questions asked. But you wouldn't know anything about that, now, would you? I guess I wouldn't. It's called using what you got to get what you want. I reckon it is. Reckon? <laughs> reckon. I haven't heard that since I left from down home. You still say over yonder? I bet you still keep a slop bucket under your bed. Just like you keep a bucket in your bed. You going somewhere? Yes, I am. And husband's coming with me. Oh, I ain't know nothing about that. See, because I didn't tell her husband he could go nowhere. <laughs> You've been drinking. I ain't gonna let you and the devil take me to the outhouse today. So you can just say what you gotta say and then leave. You know what? I'm gonna do you a favor and give you some advice. See, you know what I did when husband first told me about you and him best? No, tell me, Lou Bessie. It's Charmaine. Mm. I laughed. Did you? I sure enough did. <laughs> you think you're gonna be Mrs. Elizabeth with a spoon with your old self? Well, I don't think so. See, because I can get husband any time I want him. You won't be able to keep him. I won't try to keep him. I'll do my best to make him happy and love him as hard as I can. Then I'll pray that that'll be enough for him to want to stay. Ooh, you're going to have to do a whole lot of praying. Especially in the mornings, when he wakes up and sees what you look like lying next to him. You know how to take care of a man best. I'm talking about his needs, not washing his dirty drawers. I bet if you had two minutes of love and a cold drink of water, you'd drop dead. <laughs> Better yet, husband says you ain't never been married. You ever had a man pass? No. That reminds me of something this cat told me once about this old seller who died and had never had a man. <laughs> said they put on a headstone. Uh, who says you can't take it with you? <laughs> oh, you know what I'm saying, Bess. See, because I know how a husband is. One foot in the east, one foot in the west, and husband in the middle, just doing his best. <laughs> yes, I'm sure that you do know all about husband and bucket, and God only knows who else. I'd watch my mouth if I was you, Grandma. You can go straight to hell. And you can kiss my ass. I know what you want. You don't care nothing about husband. You don't want him at all. It's his money. That's what you after. First thing come out your mouth when you came in here was, what you was gonna do with husband's money. You was gonna get yourself a place up on Sugar Hill or Strivers Row. You was gonna start yourself a little business with a friend. Who's the friend, Lou Bessie? 
The man you share your bed with while you tell husband ain't nothing happening between you. Your little girl's daddy bucket. You need to mind your whole last business. I told you not to use that kind of language in my house. You just used it. You told me to go to hell. And I meant it, too. Now get your hussy ass out of here. Oh, I'm going, old settler. You ain't got to worry about that. You just remember what I told you. You get out of my house. I can get a husband any time I... Get out of my house! And you know what, old settler? Just to show you I can, I'm gonna take him. Get out. Sister Oliver's recommended three women who are looking for a room. You can meet each of them tomorrow in church. I paid the rent for two months in advance. Won't have to do food shopping for at least a week. Quilly, we have fussed and screamed about this and and said things that sisters should never say to one another. And now we... we've barely talked to each other for the past two weeks. And I'm sorry for that. I know you don't like me right now, but I hope you still love me. I'm gonna leave with husband on the 920 train. And I'd like to leave here knowing that you're full of, of hope and good wishes for me, the same as I'd be for you. My home will always be your home. I'll come in and say goodbye before I leave. Consequences, the show that does everything on the air, brought to you by the new Dust. Put your arms around me, honey, hold me tight. Huddle up and cuddle up with all your might. Oh, Mr. Bergen. Yes, Charlie. Uh, can I have a few words with you? Well, I suppose so. What is it? Well, we, uh, we, uh... Everybody shopping we... for flavor and coffee hard to get. America turned to Chase and Sanborn for its great big bonus of flavor. And now that there's plenty, we'll remember that lesson for a good long time to come.
That's a mighty small launch for so much angry water, Sergeant. I, uh, I have made the crossing hundreds of times, Your Excellency. vitamins and minerals, yet cost so little to take. Lady, that's easy. It stands multivitamin and mineral tablets. Look at the size of the needle that nurse got, getting ready to stick that man. I sure wouldn't let nobody touch me with no needle that. Mm. Why don't they get some shades or some curtains or something to cover them windows? They ought to know people is watching all day. I'm gonna call Miss. I'm gonna call my white woman and tell her I ain't coming in today. I don't feel like. Cleaning up her dirty house. Or tomorrow either. Yes. It's gonna be all right. Didn't it rain, children? Rain all night long. Didn't it woo? Didn't it woo? In the rain. It's your turn to sing Woo Bess. Come on. Didn't it rain, children? Rain all night long. Didn't it? Woo. Didn't it? Woo. Didn't it rain? Didn't it rain? Children, rain. 